Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Let's be honest. There are many of us that never documented our conditions while we were in service. And there's a whole host of reasons why that occurs, right? Could be the stigma that you get if you go to a, a medical uh, for any reasons, right? Uh, the labels that you would receive if you did do that. Uh, so at most, you would maybe talk to your corpsman or your medic and you'd get a handful of Motrin or um, antacid or whatever you're getting from them, Benadryl, whatever it is, right? Or if it's regarding injuries, right? The Motrin to help with the pain, the swelling, uh, and then you just kind of suck it up. Maybe you just, uh, you know, limp around a little bit and say you're fine. Uh, so with that, what happens is, is that when we turn around to get ready to file that claim, we're lacking sufficient evidence with regard to the nexus. Remember, there's three components to your successful claim, and nexus is the most important piece uh, to establish. That's the link between your condition and your time and service. Now, they're all, I guess, equally important because if you miss any of them, you're not going to be able to get your claim fully adjudicated in your favor, thus having that service connection. What I wanted to talk about here was how you can manufacture evidence for some, not all, but maybe some of your conditions. Now, I'll just kind of off the top of the head, go through some of that stuff with you here. Uh, so please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support the channel in other ways, please consider being a member. You can do so by going to the home page. You'll see highlighted members and a join button. That really does support the channel and it helps me to find you quicker in the comments. Additionally, I created a secondary uh, channel with a co-host uh, to go ahead and give you some kind of dialogue instead of this monologued version have a dialogued conversation we we'll do one long form of video and then some breakouts uh, throughout the week so please check that out at veterans daily all right so jumping back into this topic specifically what happens is we don't have all of the evidence needed for a successful claim and to to make matters worse many of us aren't even aware of exactly what we should be providing the va to begin with the three things that we're looking for when we file a claim with the VA is one, you have to have your time in service, right? That gives you a window of opportunity, entry date, exit date. The second piece is you need to have a diagnosed condition. This diagnosed condition should be chronic in nature or have some sort of residual effects. Third, you need to have a nexus the link between your condition and your time in service. Now this could be that it's simply manifested during your time in service or it could be that somehow the military caused this specific condition to you, right? So it's either that it was due to your time in service, somehow the service caused it, or that it's simply manifested during your time in service. Now what happens, going back to the first point, is oftentimes for conditions that can be kind of dealt with or treated uh, over the counter, we tend to not document it. Two of my favorite examples are migraine headaches and GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, that bad heartburn. Well, you don't mention it when you're in, but maybe you got handfuls of uh, Motrin for your migraines and you got a handful of uh, antacid for your GERD. Now, here's the thing. You may have went to the grocery store and bought a bunch of uh, over-the-counter medications for these types of conditions, migraines and GERD. But then what happens is you move forward in time. Now you're out of the military and you push through however many more years until you finally go and get diagnosed. Now you're diagnosed and you're thinking to yourself, well, I've had this ever since I was in the military. And you're talking to your doctor about that. And then you have to turn around and file a claim. Now, filing that claim is going to require you to prove that your condition manifested during your time in service. This is a really important piece of the puzzle. How do you do that if you have zero evidence in your file? So, the first thing you're going to need to do is write a statement yourself. Okay, writing a statement yourself will allow you to explain why you why you did not document anything in service. I got handful of Motrin and antacids from my medic or my corpsman and I pushed forward. 
In addition, I went to the grocery store, bought this type of medication, and treated myself. Secondly, you're going to work on getting letters, buddy statements, letters from your spouse, uh, brothers, sisters, uh, people you served with, that type of stuff. You're going to get these statements where they attest to knowing and witnessing maybe you having these types of conditions, migraines, GERD, that type of stuff. So they're attesting to witnessing this during your time period, your time in service. Okay. Number three, you'll work with your doctor to create a nexus letter. That nexus letter is going to help you establish that nexus, right? The threshold for the VA is at least likely as not. Evidence has to be equal, or it doesn't have to be, but if evidence is equal on both sides for and against you, the VA is supposed to rule in your favor. Do they get it right all the time? No. But if you had to push it through to the Board of Veterans Appeals, the, the judge is going to weigh that evidence accordingly. And um, if, you, if it is, in fact, equal, they should be ruling in your favor. So now you have that nexus letter from your doctor. I would go the next step, which is if, if, you can correlate it to your MOS in any way, whatever your condition is. Let's say migraines, loud noises, uh, all that type of stuff. Maybe you had some sort of a, a loud noise uh, situation uh, in which you can also attribute your condition to. Uh, or uh, maybe it's a back condition uh, and you had an MOS where you had to carry heavy things. Uh, maybe maybe you can correlate it to that. So. In, in any way, you're going to look at your MOS for ways to correlate your condition as well and use that as another uh, avenue. Uh, you can also Google search to see if there's any um, sort of studies done regarding A, either any bases you were at, any ships you were on, any aircraft you worked on, anything that um, your MOS might uh, contribute to having certain types of conditions. Uh, any studies done by universities, that type of stuff, is all evidence that you can use for you. I highly suggest reading through everything before you submit it because that will be evidence and it's either going to be for you or against you. So make sure that you are making sure yourself that it is for you. Next, I would work with the doctor to, to fill out the DBQ. However, remember, look, I love DBQs. That's the disability questionnaire. However, I don't love them if you don't know what information needs to go in them. It's just a blank form. Who cares, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Make sure you read the schedule of ratings for your specific condition. Read each criteria for each rating available for your condition. Once you figure out which one relates to you, you want to take that information out Write it down, print it out, copy it, whatever it is, and take it with you and have that inserted into the DBQ wherever you can. You also want to take that with you to your CMP exam so you can relay that same exact information that is the requirements for the specific rating that you should be entitled to. Uh, so you make sure that you explain to the CMP examiner exactly your uh, um, signs, symptoms, durations, all that stuff, the criteria for that specific rating. Uh, so you have that uh, DBQ ready from your doctor, and then you're going to submit your DD-214, uh, your diagnosis, all of your medical records, your nexus letter, your DBQ from your doctor, all of your buddy statements, whether it's from spouses uh, or a spouse, um, family members, people you served with, and along with your own statement, and get that over to the VA. If the VA denies you for lack of a nexus, then you can turn around and A, either file a supplemental claim with additional evidence if you can gather any up, uh, or you could push it to the Board of Appeals and let the law judge decide if the evidence is in fact equal. And if it is equal, the judge should rule in your favor. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.